you all are the really truly saved people. Y'all made it out through this rain, and I want to celebrate you and applaud you. I'm proud of you. I thought a whole heap of y'all wouldn't be here tonight, but y'all are here, and I'm very proud of you. We're continuing in on our lesson, our series that we're doing called Pastor Salt. Um, let me just by way of, of um, review, just talk for a few moments about what this series is about. And uh, please forgive me, I know many of you have been here from the start, so f just bear with me for I, so I can give, give to the heathens who haven't been here that the challenge from God to me for our church family is the fact that God desires for us to be passionate about two particular things that I think we've lost our edge in. One is getting people saved, reaching out to get unsaved people saved and those disconnected from God reconnected to God. Uh, that's one. That's a, that's a thing that God wants us to have a passion for and about. And I think I have uh, felt the Lord challenge us in this arena. And secondly, the responsibility that we have to nurture people to spiritual maturity. Uh, I was talking to uh, a pastor uh, yesterday um, who God also challenged him some months ago in the same arena, and he began to challenge his church in it. And his church uh, went from 1,200 members to 600 members because the people didn't want to do it. All right. Amen. Thank you. Um, and I was talking to another pastor today about the responsibility that um, God gives us to um, be strategic in reaching and connecting with people who don't go to church. What happens with church people is we like to keep church going the way we like church. I should have got a few more amens than that. So um, one Sunday I was uh, we had um, a guest artist one Sunday and I mean he was going. It was the Sunday that Israel Houghton was here leading us in worship and uh, I I saw a family get up and leave. So I went after them. I left the pulpit for wherever I was and went out and caught them in the hallway. Say now, they were leaving because um, they didn't want to hear music. And I challenged them to say, um, what goes on in church is not about you. Amen. It's not real. And, and if you just be patient, God will give you what you need. So some, often people come to church because they want their thing. They want the thing that they want. And it's what they like. And I'm, I'm recognizing, and I've, I'm saying this more and more often to people, is that if we keep doing church the way we did it 30 years ago, we're not going to reach people who that doesn't minister to. Yeah. Uh, we got to be creative. We got to do things differently. We cannot continue to walk down the path of the way we normally do it because, hey, uh, in Jesus' day, um, they didn't come to church in cars. Do you understand what I'm saying? A, so the car come out and you don't want to be with the car because you liked walking. <laughs> So don't get mad because other folk decide to drive in the car just because you want to walk. And that's the thing about church. We have to be creative. We have to look for new ways. And I have a heart and a passion for young people. That, I love the old people, but I got a heart and passion for young people. Thank all 17 of y'all for that rousing amen. Why is that, Pastor? Because they're the generation that has the responsibility of carrying this gospel on for decades to come. And I have a passion for them because our culture has sold them a bill of goods that they are finally beginning to recognize that what the world has sold them doesn't work. 
They walked down the path, did what the world told them to do, and did all of the stuff the world said, and they got to where the world said if they got this and if they did that and if they went here, they'd be happy. And then when they got there, they discovered that they didn't have any joy and any happiness and no fulfillment, yet they did everything they told them to do. And we have to be prepared that if, we don't, if we're not prepared to reach them and touch them and connect with them, they're going to go somewhere and blow their brains out and blow somebody else's brains out. We want to reach them with a message that tells them there's hope for your circumstance and hope for your situation and hope for your life. And so I'm not interested in keeping church usual. Amen. I'm, I'm not the page I'm on. I'm interested in, in uh, doing what, whatever we have to do. And I, might, and I know we're going to lose some people, but it's okay. It's all right. Uh, when I first became the pastor of this church, I changed a whole lot of stuff in the first year. And, and for every person we lost, God bought 100 people to take their place. But even more so, I can say I'm proud of the fact that, that the church by and large, at First Baptist Church of Lenard, and every change I made, they walked alongside with me. They went with me. I, I'm eternally grateful for these elders that have walked alongside me. I celebrate them. And their wives. Because, yeah. you know, if their wife say no. <laughs> you know, because she, it's yeah, kind of tough right there, you know. Because these men listen to their wives. And that's good. You should listen to your wife. I'm listening to you, baby. So, okay. So, anyway, I ran off a little tangent right there. I'm sorry. So, anyway, those are the two things God's challenged us on. And what I realize is that we haven't, we have to teach people how to get people saved and how to lead people to make them mature to discipleship. And this series, Pastor Salt, is designed to teach you what you need to do to get people saved. How many people y'all know some folk who, who are close to you in your vicinity that are not unsaved? If they died today, they're going to hell. How many of y'all? Okay, if you ain't got your hand up, that means every person around you is saved. That means your circle is entirely too small. Because 80% of, over 80% of people in America don't go to church anywhere have no relationship with God. So we, we, God's, that's the call of God to us, to get people saved and to help lead them to spiritual maturity. And this, this theme, this series that we're doing is designed to teach you how to do it. So we call it Pastor Salt, and every letter of the, of the word salt stands for something that you can work in your own life and help work into another person's life. Work it into your life, and if you do it, you'll help get people saved. If you do it, you'll grow to spiritual maturity and you'll help somebody else apply. So we already did S, it stands for serving. Somebody say serve, say serve. We're called to serve, we're called to serve. That's, that was the first thing we did. Second thing, okay, let me, hold on, I'm, I'm, let me just go through this. I'm going a little bit too slow here. I forgot that I had all of this on this um, PowerPoint thing. Um, we talked about salt being the, 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 the model of how God wants us to live our life Every component of salt represents something. It's, um, salt is a, a, se a seasoning, a pr preservative, uh, and a catalyst. Those are, the, those are the things our lives ought to be doing. We ought to be producing seasoning, helping pull out the best in other people's life. We ought to be a preservative of truth, and we ought to be causing people to um, get a, um, a reaction or a change in their life because they've been connected to us. So S is for serve, A is for accountable, today is L, it stands for love. Now we're going to look at the scriptures and the, the scripture is crystal clear that if you're walking around with hatred in your heart, you got a problem with God. Amen. Amen. If we're going to win people to Jesus, it's going to be by loving them. If you're going to get people changed, it's going to be by loving them. If you want to become spiritually mature, if you're going to be spiritually mature, it's going to require you to deal with the hatred that's in your heart. Amen. Yeah. I know y'all not, y'all not clapping because y'all writing, and that's fine. But at least y'all can say amen. Just to say, uh, y'all can grunt. 
We got to deal with love. You got to deal with the, what you're harboring in your heart, what you're mad about, what you're angry, who you're disgusted with, who you ain't speaking to, who you're walking by. You got to deal with what's in your heart. And the things that people do to other people and call themselves Christians is atrocious to God. You cannot say you're a child of God and you are treating and harboring people with, heart, with, with hatred. Y'all notice how the amen's going down lower and lower and lower. Let's watch the videotape. All right, start it over again. Start it over. Start it over. Start over. Start it over again. Thank you so much. Looky here, looky here. It's the mad scientist Jojo. Where's the money at, punk? I gave you guys all of my lunch money today. Shut up! Apparently you didn't give us all you had, because I saw you go to the vending machine and get change. Yeah, yeah change. change! Guys, I got this. I promise you guys, I gave you guys all of my lunch money today. How about we make a deal? You guys get 60% of my lunch money every day if you stop being mean to me and beating me up. Let's think about that. How about this? You give us 100% every day. Deal or no deal? Yeah, yeah deal, deal or, or no, no deal. deal. 100%? That's all of my lunch money. I have, a, I have a better idea this time. How about we just put our differences aside, put it in a trash can, and then we become friends. You guys look like amazing young men to become friends with. All right, that's it. That's it. I'm done. You guys, grab him. A slug! Wait, what? what? Oh, guys, this is his little friend. Let's crush it. No! What you talking about? I have a better way. A better way to do what? To kill the slug. See? Look. A salt shaker. It's something I learned in science class earlier today. Want to see something cool? This better be something good. Wow. wow. What's happening? You see, when you cover the slug in salt, the salt level begins to... What you yapping about, Jojo? What does that mean? Yeah, speaking English. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a chemical reaction. Do you have any more cool tricks? Sure I do. If you guys don't mind being French. Yeah. We can be friends. Put it here, man. So no, that means no more bullying and beatdowns? Not from me, not from us, or anyone else. We're friends now, man. So can we learn more about this chemical reaction? I can show you more in my house. Okay. And on the way, pass me some salt. So the lesson here is these guys were bullying to this guy and he chose to befriend them rather than fight them back with the bullying. Amen. So um, that's an interesting little video that our drama ministry did because I wanted them to show the slug dying once they put the salt on it. <laughs> because it, it, it shrivels up and it dies and I wanted to show that but they thought I couldn't pull the pastoral authority over them to, to, to make it happen. But um, when, you pour, when, you, when you pour love on people, it changes how they treat you. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's, we don't know that. We want to fight anger with anger. We want to cuss out people who cuss us out. If they talk about us, we want to talk back at them. But that's not the way Christians are supposed to respond and act. God has called us to a higher calling and a higher place. Amen. Somebody say amen right there with me. God has called us to, to respond differently than that. And so, um, so um, let's, let's take a look at that. 
and then ne next week we're going to talk about teaching. That'll be the f fourth and final part of this this series. Uh, let's see. I think I went backwards. Okay, this is all what we did already. I'm sorry. Let me go past this. I meant to take all this out. Let's. Where am I doing here, Pastor Jenkins? You try to use new technology, and I'm all jacked up. Okay, here we go. Accountability. If I just slow down, I'll be okay. There we go. Oh, they took it off. They say the pastor's jacking this thing up. I was. Salt is a result of a chemical reaction between sodium and chloride. That's right. Um, and we are called to counter hate and overcome hate with love. We are to overcome hate with love. I cannot tell you that's what God calls us to do. Overcome hate with love. You do not fight hate with hate. And the Bible is crystal clear about it. So if you're hating back on somebody or you're hating somebody, you're operating outside of the will and outside of the parameters of God's will for your life. That is, from a biblical standpoint, crystal clear. That is exactly what the Bible teaches us and exactly what the Bible says. And so he calls us to live our life in that kind of a way. Love is the evidence of a genuine relationship with God. Oh, that's powerful. I need y'all to get that right there. Now, when I was, when I was growing up in church, I know y'all writing that down. When I was growing up in church, the question was always, have you spoken tongues? I was growing up in the church and the thing is this, you, 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 you weren't saved and you definitely didn't have the Holy Ghost if you had never spoken tongues. So we spent up many a day at the altar trying to speak in tongues. <laughs> salami, 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 baloney, 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 baloney. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Some of them older people, they know when we had the Tarian days and you had to come up to the altar and you cry and the Holy Ghost come, Jesus, 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 <laughs> waiting for something to hit you, waiting for, and, 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 then, and then if you said something that was even the similitude of a tongue, oh, there it is, right there, there it is. Come on, come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Y'all don't know what I, you, you young people don't have no idea what we had to go through. And the people be over over you and uh, yeah that's it that's it pray call on Jesus call on Jesus <laughs> you be making up tongues just to get them out of your face Amen. who know what I'm talking about they be spitting all in your face and breath stinking you say Lord let oh Jesus you fall out just so you can get them out your face. Because we were taught that the evidence of the Holy Ghost in your life was tongues. And we were free in pursuit of tongues. Now there ain't a single verse in the Bible that says that the evidence of you being filled with the Holy Ghost or have a relationship with Jesus is speaking in tongues. Here's what the Bible says, John 13, 35. I want y'all to turn there because I want y'all to, if this ain't highlighted in your Bible, I want you to highlight it. This is, this is John 13, 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Whew, Jesus, that's a verse right there if I ever read one. That's how you know that you belong to Jesus. Jesus said, this is the way you know. This is how you know that you're a child of God is you have the capacity and the ability. This is how you know that God is ruling and reigning in your life. This is how you know you, are, you have the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You have the capacity and the ability and the willingness to love. That's a very important point. 
because we like to fight, cuss back, cuss people out, give them a piece of our mind, don't talk to them, walk away, ignore them. And that's just with your wife. I mean, it's just not, it's, it's, or your husband. Ooh, I felt some tension in the room on that point right there. So we're called to, to, to love. That's the evidence that you have the love of God. Um, let's go to 1 John chapter 4. That's, in, that's not the Gospel of John, 1 John, the Epistle of John. Chapter 4. Here's verse 21. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Ooh, that is, I got one hand clap on that point right there. That's the Bible right there. It says must, absolutely, it, it's a requirement. So, so here's the evidence that you have a walk with God and a relationship with him. And the Bible says, um, well, let me read verse 20 and 21. I didn't, read the whole, I didn't read the whole thing. Let me read, I should have had verse, yeah, verse 20 and 21. Why did I stop there? Verse 20, if, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Wow, that's profound. It's powerful. And then verse 21 says, this is a commandment we have. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not an option. Amen. It's not do it if you want to. So what am I saying? I'm saying to be a mature Christian, whatever hatred you got in your heart, if you want to win people to Jesus, whatever hatred you got in your heart, you got you to deal with it. It must be dealt with. You cannot grow in God, you cannot mature in God, you cannot become everything God wants you to be while you're harboring something in your heart. You got to get it right. Do I need to go ahead and dismiss y'all now so y'all can go ahead and get it right with people before we go any further? Yeah, it's, you know, these, these are not verses I made up. These are verses that are in the Bible. Amen. So, um, now, <laughs> I, I say about this verse often well I say about it in Revelations this, is, this word liar in the Bible I couldn't use the word liar when I was growing up you know that was like you get your mouth washed out with soap but oh since I found it in the Bible <laughs> it is a biblical term and the Bible says if you are saying that you love God but you're harboring something in your heart against somebody else, the Bible says you're a liar. You cannot love God and hate people. Because the problem, the bottom line is, I'm going to get to this verse in a minute, but let me sneak it into you real quick, real early right here. Because I know people do things to you that you don't like. Yes, sir. And people do things to you to hurt you. Yeah. We're going to read in a few moments, but I'm going to stick it out here real quick so you can digest it. So by the time I get to it, you have the capacity to be able to receive it and accept it. The reality of the fact is, if you just love people who treat you good, that's what the heathens do. Unsaved people do that. There's nothing special about that to like people who like you, to love people who love you. Anybody can do that. You don't have to be saved to do that. But when you have the capacity to love somebody that's trying to hurt you and kill you and defeat you and shame you and get you fired and, 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 and bring pain in your life, when you have the capacity to forgive them and love them and treat them differently than the way they are treating you, that's the sign that you are a child of the Most High God. That's how you know you belong to Him. And if you're not at that place, you are not sold out to Jesus. He's not ruling your life. Yes. If they do X to you and you do Y back at them, you ain't, Jesus ain't controlling you. Amen. 
Okay, let me roll on here. We're commanded to love our brothers and our enemies. Thank both of you for that right there. Thank you. We're commanded to love our brothers and our enemies. We're commanded to love those who we are friends with and those who are not our friends. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 12 because it gives us the instructions to love without hypocrisy, without being a hypocrite. I want to walk down through Romans 12 verses 9 through 21. And it starts off, says, let love be, <laughs> you're right. He said, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let love be without hypocrisy. Y'all in chapter, Romans chapter 12? Don't be hypocritical. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Then he begins to give us a string of instructions. The first thing he tells us in verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Be kindly affectionate. That means be kind to one another. Be kind some of our behavior is not kind. When you come in a room and speak to everybody but that one person, that ain't kind. That's mean, that's nasty. Look at your neighbor and say, you nasty, you nasty. That's mean. But the instructions from God is to be kind. Matter of fact, he says, be kindly affectionate. He uses that terminology. Be affectionate. Be kindly affectionate to one another. I got to hurry up. I'm acting like I got all day. Verse 10 says, also giving preference to one another. Somebody say, give preference to one another. That's right there in, in verse 10 as well. That we, in honor, giving preference. That means you give honor to the person. You give them, you, you, you yield to them. If we can just get Christians just to do this part right here, we will win a whole lot. Be, give preference, give honor, give respect, yield to them, yield to the person. Give them the right of way. You take the parking space. You take the seat. I'm not going to sue you. The money mean that much to you, keep it. Tension up in this camp. It's tension. They don't like this kind of teaching. Daryl, forgive me that I, I've hated on the Dallas Cowboys all these years. The Holy Ghost has convicted me not to say another bad thing about the Cowboys while I'm in church. And I'm going to love my enemies. Oh, Jesus, please help me. Give preference. In honor, give preference. Give them preference. Yield, step back. Take the back, take the back. Back up and let them have way. Let them, if, 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 you, you take, the, you take the, the high road means I yield to you. I give preference and honor to you. Verse 13 says, distributing to the needs of others. Verse 13, distributing to the needs of others. That's another thing. We give to the needs of the saints. So you, if you see that person with a need, you move to meet that need. Amen. Don't get angry and not speak to them Amen. or not help them because you got something against them. You, 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 you give of your resources to help their needs. And then it also says, um, in addition to that, verse 13, that... Um, well, let me go down to verse 4. Or give, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving the hospitality. Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. You speak well of them. Bless them who are trying to hurt you. Boy, that's a profound verse. They're persecuting you, but you bless them. Oh my God. That's, the Holy Ghost is all up in here whether y'all recognize him or not. Bless them 
bless them who are persecuting you. Mm. Then it says in verse 18, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. That means if it's left up to you, do everything in your power to be at peace. Amen. Do, do every step you need to take. And I know while I'm talking, I know why y'all quiet, because the Holy Ghost is talking to you about all of the times you could have shown love and you didn't. I know he is. And I know he's speaking to you about going back to the people who you didn't treat with love. And you're going to confess to God before you leave today. And you're going to go to those people that you didn't treat them with love and ask them to forgive you. And God's going to give you some way to demonstrate love to those persons. Amen. Amen. I'm going to need some police protection when I leave here. Today. <laughs> they don't like this kind of teaching and preaching. But it's what God calls us to do. It's, 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 it is absolutely the will of God that this is, this is what we do. This is clear. This is the Bible. I, I'm not, I didn't make this up. I didn't put this in here. Hold up. Y'all don't like that verse. Wait till you read verse 19. <laughs> Beloved. Oh, my gosh. Look at verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath for it is written vengeance is mine I will repay says the Lord don't you try to pay them back don't you try to hurt them God says vengeance is mine I'll do the payback and the reason you ought to let God handle it because when he handles it it's handled now if you try to get them back and you throw a punch, then they're going to throw a punch, and then you're going to throw a punch. That can go on for years. But when God throws the punch, they out. It's over. This is profound. If your enemy, verse 20, vengeance is my verse 19, I will be paid, says the Lord. Verse 20, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. In other words, God says, leave me to vengeance. You do them well. You treat them well. This is how, this is a spiritual battle, y'all. This is how we handle this. This is how we do it. Somebody's trying to hurt you. Somebody's doing damage to you. Somebody's painting you. This is God's instruction. And if you can't do this, if you find it impossible in your heart and in your life to carry this out, re-examine your relationship with God. Y'all got to get that. Get that in your mind. Get that in your heart. If I can't do it, if it's impossible for me to walk down this road, if there's nothing inside of me that will allow me to humble myself and do what the scripture teach, I need to re-examine whether Jesus Christ is Lord of my life or not. Now here's the deal. Just because you got saved 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, does not mean that Jesus is still Lord of your life. You know what? We keep going back and grabbing the reins and pulling the control back to ourselves, but there comes a time that God says, I'm going to show you that you are living your life under your authority under your insight of what you want to do he says but I want to show you that I have the power to fight every battle for you I can help you win every way that needs to be won but you cannot fight it by using your own weapons verse 21 says verse 21 says do not overcome do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Wow. Man, I wish people could learn this lesson and live their life like this. Overcome evil with good. Say, God, give me the grace to do good to these people. Help me, Lord. I humble myself. I need help. Help me to overcome evil with good. All right, let's go to um, 
Luke 6. And there it talks about loving your enemies. Mm -hmm. I knew y'all were going to be excited about that. We got to the section. Luke 6, 27 through 36. Let's read this section of scripture. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. That's verse number 27. Do good to those who hate you. Love them. Love your enemies. Y'all see that? You said this already. Verse 27 says it again. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. Bless them, do good, pray for them. When the last time you put their name in your prayer, your prayer life? I'm asking y'all a question. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He's, he's just, 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 if, if you have a Bible, if it's in red, this is Jesus talking. Clear instructions, love them, do good, bless them who are cursing you, pray for those. Y'all see that right there? Verse number 29, to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other. I'm not going there, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. And from him, look at this, and from him, oh my gosh, and from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. They see you for your coat, give me a sweater too. You know what I know about God? If you live your life like this, he will reward you. Yeah. Verse 30 says, give to everyone who asks you and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. You give to others and don't ask for it, don't, get, don't try to get it back. Now we're trying to teach people in our church in our financial freedom class, don't make loans. A lot of relationships have been broken from loans. Yeah, I know some more people want to clap there, but they're writing. The Bible says, when somebody comes to me and they say, Pastor, I got this problem with this person. I loaned them some money. I already know that they need help with learning what the Bible says about loans. You don't, you don't, you don't loan to people. You, you, if, if you need it back, don't give it to them. If you need it back, you just say to them, I don't have it to give to you. And the instructions of God is, is that we don't loan, we give with no anticipations or expectations to get anything back. Right? Y'all with me so far? Let's slide down to verse 32. Here's what verse 32 says. Oh, let me read verse 31 since I'm here, cited my, my script, but it's talking to me, so let me, I know it must be for somebody here. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. So if, if you had a financial need, I mean, you had a need, wouldn't you want somebody to give it to you rather than loan it to you to get it back? Oh, there y'all go, acting like you don't want nobody to give you nothing. Yeah, you want somebody to give it with no, no anticipation or expectations to get it back. And so the scripture says, you, you, do, you treat others like you would want to be treated. Verse 32. But if you love those who love you, uh, let's see, man, I'm, I'm messing up again. I got it. I refuse to let this thing beat me over. <laughs> There's a level of pride in me that just won't let this thing win. 
verse 32 through 34. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. So he's given us very clear instructions that that's not what God wants us to do. Verse 35, while I'm here, but love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. Verse 35, I love it. I, admit, I should have put this down. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. That's what God does. He's kind to us. He's grateful to us. But your reward will be great. Get that in your heart. Get that in your mind. That's the will of God. So you need to go call some people today and forgive them of the money that they owe you. Some of you need to go to the people who owe you some money and forgive them. Let me try it again. <laughs> Let me let that sink in. Because I feel the tension in the room. But there's no credit. You haven't done anything if you give to people with hopes of getting it back. That's what the Bible says. Verse 36 says, therefore be merciful just as your father also is merciful. You, you give mercy just like God has given us mercy. I don't know where y'all are, but I'm so grateful for the mercy God has given to me. Anybody here grateful for the mercy God has given to me? Here's what wins people to Jesus is we extend mercy to them. We're kind to them. We love them. We're compassionate. We're, we're, we're hospitable. We're, we, we, we love them. We give. We help. We support. That's what wins people to Jesus because that's what got us saved. What got us saved is God looked beyond our faults and saw our needs and met our needs. We're called to be Christ-like. That's why we are Christians. Okay, let me close here with 1 Corinthians 13. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, then I'm going to be finished. Here is the chapter of chapters. This is the love chapter. Here's what it says. First three verses tells us that if you act but you don't have any love, it don't mean nothing. Verse 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. The first three verses basically say, if you go through the acts, but you don't have love, it means nothing. You can speak in all the tongues in the world, but if you don't have love, it means nothing. And the church is full of people who can speak in tongues, but can't speak the English to each other. Amen. Amen. That's a problem. I believe the heart of God is broken by people who, who can, can exhibit all the gifts, sing like angels, preach, preach, you under the, preach you under the pew, but you don't have love, prophesy, tell you what color draws you. I mean, they could just prophesy to you. Have deep insights and knowledge, and though you have the faith to believe God to do the most impossible thing, 1 Corinthians 13 says, if you have love, you don't have love, you are absolutely nothing. The measuring stick in God's kingdom is not what gifts you possess, but do you, do you love people? Amen. And when you love people, you just be kind. It's just you be kind to people. Amen. Just be kind, be nice. Amen. It don't cost nothing to be nice to people. I feel the cussing spirit coming on me right now. Because church people can be mean. Amen. Amen. They can. Amen. I was talking to a person yesterday who stopped going to church, ain't been to church in seven years. Woo. Counseling this person because of how the church people treated them. 
This is the kind of church we're going to be. Listen carefully. Lean your ear this way. Just lean, your, lean, lean up. We're going to be the kind of people that regardless of the issues that a person has in life, we're going to love them. Write these two verses down. I don't have these verses to give you, but jot them down. Proverbs 10, 12 and Proverbs 17, 9, I think. Is it 19, 17, 9? Let me look it up real quick. They both say the same thing. Here's what it says. Let me find it real quick. Hold your finger, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm coming back to that. Yeah, here's verse, Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Somebody say, love covers. Then let's go to 17.9. Proverbs 17.9. He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. What does that mean? That means I'm not trying to expose you. I'm not trying to tell your business. Love covers. Everybody in this room got something in their life that they don't want to shout it from the rooftop. Amen. Everybody here, everybody done done something, said something, thought something, wanted something, did something that you, want to, you don't want it blasted. If God pulled a cover off of you, your neighbor, you get up and go sit in a different part of the building. But thanks be to God. He covered us. Woo. I thank God he covered us. Somebody ought to give God a shout that he's a covering God. Praise his name. He covered me. Love covers. So we're, going, we, we're not trying to expose you. We're not trying to put it in the paper. Put it on blast. That's, that's what people want. They want to find some dirt on you. Child, have you heard? Y'all need to stop letting people come to tell you, child, have you heard? But a, lot of, a lot of church people are, are, are Christian garbage cans. You like to hear the trash on other people. But you got to have enough fortitude to say don't bring me nobody else's trash I don't want to hear about nobody else's failures and mistakes and errors sins let me roll on let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13 the first three verses talks about if you don't have love you nothing verse 4 love suffers long that's the first thing love is patient with people when it says suffers long it's willing to be patient with people you ought to, we ought to thank God that he loved us enough that he never drew a line to say I've had enough. He suffers long and is kind. Somebody say, and he's kind. Love is kind. It treats people with kindness. Love treats people with kindness. We're called to, if you want to know, I want you to evaluate your life on this, the measuring stick that's put in this passage about, about love, the great gift. So I want you to ask yourself, do I find myself being patient with people? Am I kind to people? Verse four also says, love does not envy. That means it's not jealous. It's not jealous, it's not jealous. Um, uh, A lot, of, a lot of people are jealous of other people. When, when you have a walk with God, you don't, you don't get jealous of what, you're not envious of what somebody else has. Amen. And, and what I say all the time, what I say all the time is, if God blesses my neighbor, he's in the neighborhood, I might be next. And I I'm, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for you. Amen. I don't want what you got. I don't, whatever God got for you, I want you to have it. Because what God has for me is for me. Hey, why would I be? I'm not jealous of you. The same God that gave you what he gave you will give me what's due me 
and you know what I believe? Let me throw this in here real quick. I got to hurry up. I'm acting like I got all night. I ain't got all night. Here's what I learned about God. Here's what I love about God. I don't want God to give me mine until I'm ready to handle it. Because <laughs> tell the truth, if he gave it to you now, you probably can't handle it right now. Hold it back, God, till I have the capacity to handle it. Don't give it to me until I'm mature enough to be able to handle it. Hold it back until I'm ready for it. Hold it back until my season comes. I might waste it. I might abuse it. I might spoil it. I might not appreciate it. But when the time is right, bring it on, God. I'm ready. When the season is right, bring it on. Don't be jealous of other people. Love is not jealous. Love does not, verse 4, we're still in verse 4, does not parade itself. It's not bragging. If you really love, you ain't bragging about yourself. Love is not puffed up. It means it's not proud. It doesn't think more highly of itself than it ought to. Real love does not puff itself up and make it, make itself more important than others verse number five go back okay let me go back now y'all see y'all know I'm challenged with this thing it's right there in the scriptures right it's right there and oh, oh they took it off up there oh okay well it's right in the Bible right here in the Bible just let me know when I can go on to the next section Y'all done? Yeah. <laughs> All right, verse 5 says, does not behave rudely. Real love has good manners. Somebody say manners. Yeah. Has good manners. Love does not seek its own. It's not self-centered. If you think everything has to revolve around you, you don't have the kind of love that God wants you to have. And love is not easily provoked. It's not super sensitive. It's not irritable. You're teaching and preaching now, Pastor. So examine yourself do I have good manners and again remember this is not about people you like this is about people who present problems for you <coughs> now I've never met a human being that did not want to be loved I have never and God is equipping us as his children to be able to love people I got to hurry up. Y'all got that? Can I go on to the next thing? Okay. Verse number six. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. That means love doesn't celebrate somebody else's failures. You ain't happy to hear that somebody messed up. You don't get any joy or pride out of the fact that somebody missed the mark we should we should cry when somebody misses the mark verse 6 says um, we don't rejoice in iniquity but we rejoice in the truth when they do the right things and make the right choices finally verse 6 verse 7 says love bears all things that means it's defending and upholding the person you're speaking on their on their behalf in a, way, in a manner that's well. Love bears all things. That means you defend and uphold. 
and love believes all things. That means you believe the best about the person. You believe the best about them. And I know that's sometimes difficult when perhaps what they're putting in front of you is not the best, but you, you believe the best about their future, about their potential. You believe the best about that things about them can change. Believe the best about them. Finally, love, love hopes all things. You never give up on people. I thank God he never gave up on me. And love endures all things. You remain loyal to the end. Till you get to the end of the journey, you remain loyal. Now, I'm way past my time. So, I, here's my challenge to you tonight. I got multiplicity of challenges. The first thing is to examine your own heart. And where's your heart as it relates to other people? If there's anybody in your life, anybody in your, from your past, that you're harboring something about them, you need to talk to God about that. Amen. So what I've discovered about human beings is that hurting people hurt people. That's, it. That's true. And I discovered that when hurting people hurt people, you help that hurting person by loving that person. Yeah, you, you love them. So you're not going to help them by hurting them back or hating. God's plan is to love them. And, and here's, what I learned about, here's what I learned about God, that every person needs to be loved. And perhaps they got some past, some history, some burden in their life that's caused them to treat you the way they treated you or to do the things they did, but learn to forgive and look past what they've done and love them and help them know that God loves them. You know what we are? You and I, here's what I learned. I learned that God wants us to say to him, Lord, make me the channel to flow your love to that person. Let me be the channel to get your love to that person. That's what you got to do. Make me the channel to be your conduit to show them how much you love them. God can use you. Use you to make a difference in that person's life. Amen. Now this week, I want to challenge you to think about, that's what I want to challenge you. I want you to think about who you need to make it right with. Go ahead and make that list. I don't have time for you to, do, to write the whole list here today. <laughs> I don't have time. But in your, in your private secret devotions, When you get along with God, Amen. talk to him about what you've been harboring in your heart. Amen. And if you are a true child of God with his spirit living in you, he will give you the power and the grace to see beyond the person's fault yes. and see that they need the love of God Amen. through you. So look for opportunities to demonstrate love. Look for opportunities to your friends, your relatives, your neighbors. Look for ways to go above and beyond. Amen. Your spouse. <laughs> I love you, baby. <laughs> the other day, I showed my wife how much I loved her. And let me tell you what I did. Two weeks ago, we took our oldest daughter back to school. Not our oldest, our youngest daughter, Natalie, back to Drexel High School. Did I tell you about this already? No. We took Natalie back to Philadelphia to school. Drove up there. Two vans of stuff. Two vans. <laughs> because she goes to a school where she won't be coming back home for three years. To live. I mean, you know, she's, she has a 
in co-op and interns and she goes to school through the summer so she had to take all her clothes. <laughs> Last Saturday, Elder Jones, my wife wanted to go back up to Philadelphia to take groceries. <laughs> It's a big problem now. Not this past Saturday, but the previous Saturday was the air show. <laughs> that has not been here for three years. And won't be here for another three years. Okay. I love flying. Yes, sir. The Thunderbirds was there. <laughs> But because I love her. <laughs> I miss the air show. I had it on my calendar. <laughs> Been on there all year long. <laughs> she said, God changed my plans. <laughs> don't put that on God. Please don't put that on God. And if the truth be told, on the way back, the show was over at three, on the way back at five, I started thinking about that thing. <laughs> we could have taken those groceries up any day. <laughs> I'm getting kind of salty thinking about it. <laughs> but not a good salty thing. <laughs> but because I want her to know I love her. And I will never let her live it down. <laughs> Find a kind act. <laughs> and all I ask her to do is to let me have some of these. <laughs> I'm almost finished, Helen. Sure, yes. We talked about these a couple of Tuesdays ago. Somebody that Sunday gave us a gift, but I, I hadn't opened it up. But when I got home on Tuesday, I took it out the bag, and here is what was in there. And my wife grabbed them Amen. and hid them from me. Amen. Talking about accountability. <laughs> but since I went to Philadelphia on the day of the air show <laughs> and it had been on the calendar all year long
All right, if you have a question, come to the, uh, come real quick, because I got a bunch of internet questions. Here's, a, let me just start off until y'all get, if y'all got any questions, somebody's, and I, I gotta hurry up, I'm acting like I got all day. Can you love someone and not like them? Yeah. <laughs> the, the deal is, you love the person, but not like their ways. Yeah. Distinguish between the person and their behavior. Yeah. Okay? All right. Go ahead. I take, always take the people in, in person first. Yes. Hey. In Proverbs 31a, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Hold on for a second. I need y'all to turn the mics over here because I can't hear her. Go ahead. They should Proverbs have Proverbs 31a says, open your mouth for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, plead for the cause of the poor and the needy. I, I just got back pastor this morning from um, Alabama. Um, and I watched you, your service on Sunday at the 12 o'clock show, the 12 o'clock show. We know what her history is in her life. <laughs> I went to Alabama A&M game, which is really good. But anyway, um, so I watched the, the service and I kept wanting to stop watching it, but God said, continue to watch it, continue to watch it, because you all were in praise and worship, and the Holy Spirit was there, and, he, and I wanted to stop, and he said, keep watching it, keep watching it. And then at the end of the service, you said, to all who cannot afford to buy tickets for um, the women's conference, please go to the back. And I wasn't here, because I was in Alabama. So should have been in church. Go ahead. I'm gonna say <laughs> So I called all my friends that I knew that were in the church and I said, do me a favor. Go to the back for me and tell them that I need a ticket. The the ticket is not for me, but it's for fifty people who needs the ticket. So the 50 people that need the tickets says... Let me, hold, let me stop you for a minute. Because yes. if this is what you want to talk about, let's talk about that offline. Do you have a question about the, top, no, the topic tonight? No, I'm talking about love. Okay. I'm talking about love. Okay, so please, can okay. you... Okay, love. My question is... If you love someone, and it says you're supposed to give back to the poor, don't you just supposed to just give freely? Like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. Are you asking why are we charging a fee for the women's conference? Is that yes, the ultimate sir. question? I can tell you the answer to that question. Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. There's a lot of reasons because the cost of the conference is way above what you're paying. The church is already subsidizing the cost of the conference substantially. Now, when we did the free conferences, when we offered for free for years, had people sign up for you years. Sure. And people would sign up by the thousands. And then when it came time for the conference, they wouldn't come. Right. And we paid money to make sure there's enough food here. We paid money to make sure the stuff was covered and it cost the church major dollars. We're not being wise students, stu stewards of it if we don't do that. And so the reason there's a fee to it is for us to get a to help us offset the cost of this thing it is astronomical you, it's probably cost twice what you pay the church is already subsidizing it hugely and the only way that we can know how many people are coming is to put a fee to it that's why we have a fee to it and and we are offering to people who can't afford to be able to get we have i thank god for the men and women in this church who Amen. donated to it to help make it happen So can we do conferences? No, we can't do them for free. We cannot do them for free. Did you, did you just hear why I said we don't do them for free? I did, free? I did. Okay. I just, you know, I just see so many conferences around the world and they're free and I know that we did them for free. Here, okay, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. Um, I've been to a lot of conferences too. 
And the way they pay for their conferences is they take up an offering. And it'll, they'll take, yeah, 15 offerings. They'll, it'll take an hour for the offering. I, I don't want our church to be like that. I don't want us to be up here having a long, drawn-out <laughs> offering to pay the bill. We did that, too. We took up offerings. Yes. We did that. But it never paid the bill. So, you know, we just want to be able to, you know, nobody in our church will ever be denied the opportunity to go to in, any conference held at this church if they don't have the money. We've never turned anybody down to this day. If you got a need, you come. We'll help you get in there. Yes, sir. Uh, Pastor, can you hear me? Pastor Jenkins, uh, I just want to thank you for just teaching. I am... I'm going on 52 weeks of marriage, 52 years of marriage after the 18th. And I'm trying to learn, like I told you one time, I'm trying to walk in the spirit because I've been walking in the flesh so long in my, in my house of hell. And I'm learning to sometimes shut my mouth and let my boys in bed tell learn to take the hit and be quiet. So, Lord, I'm trying to learn it, sir. I thank you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the truth of your word. And I just pray this day that you would help us to be lovers of men to love those that despitefully use us and reject us and hurt us. Teach us, God, regardless of what others do, that you've empowered us to treat them with love. Now, cause every person to think that through in their hearts of who they need to be reconciled with and what they need to do to be right in your eyes. Now, Father, if there's anybody unsaved, backslidden, unsure, draw them to yourself in Jesus' name.